Good evening, good afternoon, as well as good morning to all of you. So today uh, is 7th April. Uh, we are starting our leads meeting. And, uh, and we're taking up a very important topic uh, that is very relevant, actually, in Sri Lanka at the moment. So, uh, so we have a speaker who is being professional on this subject, and it's election manipulation in Sri Lanka. We all need to understand that, and without that, we will not be able to uh, find the right path. So it's important for everyone to understand, uh, although we are speaking in English, you're welcome to speak in Sinhala or Tamil. Uh, so there'll be people who will be able to interpret that as well. So the at the moment, there are seven people. Uh, more people will join, I hope, uh, with time. And uh, so, we call uh, it's uh, Professor S. I. Keita Ponkalan. Is that how I spell your name properly? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay, welcome. And I was very impressed to see your uh, book um, on on Sri Lankan politics and and its title, Electoral Politics in Sri Lanka: Presidential Elections, Manipulation, and Democracy. You really need a lot of understanding to write a book like this uh, because it's very closely, it took us quite some time to find out this because there was someone who was calculating all the political results and that's how we got to know about uh, this issue. So the I actually, although there are only a few people, it's nice to know who have seen this book, who have read this book and so on. So there's a kind of a little... Anonymous, anonymous poll, I thought I will do. Let me see that you can launch that. You'll get just three questions. You just say whether you have seen this book or whether you have read this book or you only heard after my uh, introduction just a week ago. It will be nice to know uh, how you all are doing. Let's see. You will see the results now. Yeah. Yeah, I see. It. I see. It. You see the results. So, so you can see uh, only two third of uh, people who heard about it after sending the link, and only one third has actually seen it. But have no one has read it full and full. So here we are. You, this is why sharing information is so important. And right. thank you again for coming in because this yeah. will be a public video, and then hopefully people will link it to afterwards. Right. So. Just a little bit of background into it. Um, if you, we, I'll have discussed before the democratic index and democratic index is something about the democracy level that's been calculated. I'm not going to say how it was calculated, but let's look at the 2024 map. This is quite important to see. Now, democracy is hard to maintain. Proper democracy is hard to maintain. And you can see from this, dark blue area, how many countries in the world are authoritarian, okay? So authoritarian means that, you know, the leaders tell the others what to do and then you just carry on. If you don't do it, you get punished. So if you, that's authoritarian. Now, if you look at the democracies, which is this light blue, uh, you can see full democracies are not many. So you say, for example, Australia is a full democracy, Canada is, and UK is. Nordic countries are one of the best areas where you have the full democracies. Now look at us. Sri Lanka is kind of a uh, purplish kind of color mm -hmm. and a bit darker. And look at the India, okay? United, the United States, most South American countries, South Africa, they are flawed democracies. And we got defined as flawed in 2022, Sri Lanka. So, so this is hard to go by. And then it's probably good to see how we are dealing with our democracy uh, to see what's happening. Now, if you take the democratic index, the highest level is 10, nobody's got 10 but the highest numbers are 
Norway, New Zealand, Iceland, Sweden, Finland. So Nordic countries are the best. And also New Zealand, we've seen that in the past with, with the fantastic prime minister over there. So now you look at Sri Lanka. Okay, Sri Lanka, we are a flawed democracy. We are, our score 2024 is 6.17. But look at our friends, for example. Above us, we got India 7.18. USA 7.85, Australia 8.66, Japan 9.12, UK 9.12. So that's the democratic index of our friends. So these people have been more, more helpful uh, in the past, and but often get criticized as well. Now look at the others as well, who are very good friends of our government and so on. Pakistan 4.12, China 2.12, Russia 2.06, Iran 1.96. So we are not quite sure if you look at which way we are moving. Are we moving that way or are we moving this way? Is what we need to understand if you look at how the politics is moving in Sri Lanka. Now, if you look at our governance, it's the 1978 constitution based, which has been tinkered 21 times already how it's working. Okay, so we got the governance. The executive is the most powerful and, and polarized over and over again to become more dictatorial. And the executive hides parts of the constitution or doesn't refer to it. So the constitution is not fully active, although, you know, I might be blamed that I'm telling not the truth. Legislature, that's the parliament has become smaller, although that's the democratic governance system. And it's more like an appendage to the executive. So the this does what they want, they want does what this does. Independent commissions, although said to be independent, they're not independent at all. They just work on the act that's passed and that's it. They don't make their own decisions. They just do what they've been asked to do through an act of parliament. And the judiciary, somewhat independent, but still they are working under a lot of pressure because there are these political stooges who kind of get activated from time to time and then shoot. That's the problem. So, so we are in this kind of a governance system at the moment. What we want is something like this. Complete five pillars, completely separate, totally independent, and then we'll be fully democratic if we get there. So getting there is quite a problem when we have election manipulations. That is why we need the constitution to become the supreme of constitution, supreme law of the country. Everyone follows that to the exact letter, then we will have a better governance system. So just uh, Professor Keitha, we actually don't use titles in our discussions. We just often use the first names or you, you like to be called Keitha uh, because um, there are lots of people who have very highly professionally um, skilled in this audience. So it's like to be more human and then more equal in we talk. Now, Keita is a distinguished professor of conflict resolution in Salisbury University, Maryland, USA. And he's been previously chairing the conflict analysis and dispute resolution department at Salisbury University for six years. Then before that, he was a professor of political science and chair of the Department of Political Science and Public Policy at University of Columbus, Sri Lanka. So we are proud of you in a way, Keitha, and welcome to our forum. And I'll let you share your slides and then start your talk. We'll have small uh, Q&A at the end. All right, thank you very much, uh, Chula. It's a very generous and nice uh, in introduction. And I'm extremely happy that I'm able to meet uh, you guys, um, uh, as Chula said, um, I was at the University of Colombo for a long time. Then I left uh, Sri Lanka to come and work here. Uh, I have an element of um, uh, guilt uh, in me uh, for not serving, uh, serving in Sri Lanka, uh, but uh, reality takes over. Um, therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy that I'm able to still connect and talk to 
uh, you guys. Uh, thank you for invite, inviting me. Um, so I'll, uh, um, what I want to say about um, my uh, presentation, talk, whatever, uh, you can call me Keita. Any, anybody can call, call me Keita. Um, um, is that um, as far as I understand from uh, from reading your material on, um, on your website, uh, that um, you are mostly concerned about um, practical problems in Sri Lanka, authoritarianism, democracy, uh, rule of law, and things like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested about those issues. Uh, but my presentation is more from an academic, uh, comes from a um, presentation, comes from an academic uh, perspective. Um, so I uh, I wanted to write a um, book on Sri Lankan presidential election because um, we are a very significant uh, presidential system in the region, uh, but we did not have a um, I'm kind of a comprehensive analysis of what's happening in the presidential uh, system. So I have been uh, working, uh, I mean, collecting uh, data slowly for a long, long time. Then I finally, finally found time to sit down and, and write the book um in the in in the us um when i started uh, collecting data um some of my, some of my students uh, at the university of colombo helped me to work with me as, as you know um and help me collect uh, data etc um the academics us um usually narrow down um, topics uh, so that um you can um, undertake a kind of in-depth analysis of what you what you are studying therefore uh, although uh, i'm concerned about election manipulation in general in, in, in sri lanka uh, the research was about only one form of election as presidential election uh, so what i'm going to do is uh, present what i learned from the research the book is published as as Chula, Chula said, uh, and then during the discussion, uh, um, we can focus on uh, practical and larger issues. Um, so that's that's how I I, I plan. Uh, I I guess that's okay. Chula, is that is that okay? Yeah, yeah, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, word to word. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's good. yeah perfect. Okay, so uh, uh, the book is called uh, um, Electoral Politics in Sri Lanka, Presidential Elections, uh, Manipulation and Democracy. Um, uh, presidential elections because uh, the entire focus of the research and the book is presidential election. I was not going into other elections like parliamentary election, local government election, etc. So it's entirely focuses on the presidential election, but it has implications for um, other uh, elections and also politics in general uh, and uh, the theoretical framework I used to analyze the elections is election manipulation and that's an upcoming upcoming um, topic it is a, it is a relatively new uh, area uh, most of the publications on electoral manipulation came out after year 2000 so it is still like a new area to look into uh, elections and the uh, democracy part is obviously uh, so the implications for electoral manipulation in democracy, etc. Um, so what I did is um, um, divide uh, since 1982, we have conducted eight presidential elections. So uh, uh, I took um, um, uh, elections one by one and did an in-depth analysis. So this is the content of the book, uh, chapter one, theoretical um, um, framework, methodology, et cetera. Then, um, then um, eight chapters on different elections uh, from 1982 to the last election happened in uh, 2019. Then the final chapter uh, looks at um, the question of the question I asked is uh, how political actors uh, manipulate elections. That is the question that um, directed the whole research. Um, that 
question is answered in the final 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 chapter um i'm pretty happy about the uh the content um uh, chapters uh, only regret i have after publishing the uh, publishing the um, book is the number 7 chapter number 7 that could have been titled uh, uh, titled uh, modern dutu gebelos uh, rather than uh, reaping the fruits of military victory uh, uh, would have been a little bit more attractive uh, title so other than that um, 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 the the chapter titles um, self explanatory and 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 they explain what what i'm looking at and also uh, also uh, kind of underscores my understanding about those those uh, ele elections um um so the question about the research question i i ask why uh, how political parties or politicians manipulate elections because election could be undertaken by different actors uh, for example uh, elections could be manipulated by uh, private entities like ngos uh, multinational corporations etc and elections could also be manipulated by citizens. Citizen manipulation is also part, could be also part of uh, election manipulation. So uh, my research exclude those elements. Elements focuses only on on um, uh, political actors, political parties, leaders, etc. etc. Um, so before going into uh, manipulation um, um, issues, um, let me uh, highlight. Uh, some of the uh, major uh, points I have or what I learned from the research about presidential elections in Sri Lanka. So I have, uh, uh, obviously, um, election violence is one of the most prominent themes to study elections in Sri Lanka. So I, um, I joined uh, uh, Colombo University in 19... 92 as an assistant lecturer and i wanted to do my uh, mphil immediately so i went to a, a, a prominent professor to talk to him about uh, my uh, research and he said you should do political violence uh, that's it um, so you know that prominent the theme is that prominent but i didn't study i went to do went into um, other other areas for my uh, master and also phd uh, so the point i'm trying to make is political violence is no obvious part of elections election analysis in in in, in sri lanka um, and i kind of argued in the book uh, political violence could also be um, understood from three different uh, perspectives and i call political violence and the, I mean, election violence could be understood from um, three different uh, perspectives, political violence, ethnic violence, and election violence. When you when you start thinking about, you know, compartmentalizing violence, and we have better understanding. Um, so political violence is mostly um, uh, by JVP like entities, uh, the, um, the impact of uh, the first insurgency, second insurgency, uh, on presidential elections had uh, deep meanings. Uh, then I also call ethnic violence is different from political violence, um, uh, the uh, uh, undertaken by ethnic groups uh, like the LTTE um, constantly. LTTE, I mean, the, one of the most, pro the study indicated one of the most prominent impact on presidential elections created by the LTT. LTT was the most, from, although it was not com contesting elections, it was one of the most prominent actors impacting elections in Sri Lanka. Um, uh, so that's an interesting part of the uh, discussion. And then election violence, what I call election violence, undertaken in order to uh, change the, um, change the um, uh, results, uh, outcome of the, of the election, uh, like political parties, attacking each other, candidates um, undertaking different uh, tactics, etc. Um, so it's, I think it's, it would be useful to think about violence uh, from different perspectives rather than just taking violence as one framework. Um, 
when you go into um, the theoretical um, discussions uh, of uh, electoral manipulation uh, or election manipulations, um, some researchers treat violence as part of election uh, manipulation. Uh, and some believe manipulation from a theoretical perspective. Manipulation is a, an illegal act, necessarily. And I exclude those two arguments because I don't think manipulation is necessarily illegal. You can undertake lots of uh, legal means to manipulate elections. Um, and I also excluded uh, violence because violence is illegal. Um, cannot be done. Uh, therefore, my uh, argument uh, differs a little bit from uh, some of the uh, researchers um, on uh, election manipulation theoretical theoretical uh, framework. Um, uh, so that's one. Um, violence is a prominent part of uh, presidential elections in Sri Lanka. Um, then I also noticed a great gender imbalance. Uh, I uh, came to the conclusion that it is a male-dominated um, sphere. Um, uh, women are mostly, uh, mostly um, passive participants of the elections. They under undertake work. They go for uh, propaganda. Uh, they vote, uh, but they do. They are not in the competition. Really, really, they are not in the competition. Uh, out of all the all the candidates, only a few uh, female contestants. Uh, very few, uh, and most of the female candidates came from well-established elite families. Uh, some of the examples, of course, we know Sidima, uh, Badar Nayaka, Chandrika, Kumar Tonga. Sidima, Sidima, Sidima Nayaka, Gamani Disa Nayaka's wife. Only exception I found was the um, uh, Ajanta Pereira, uh, who came from an ordinary uh, background, and uh, but couldn't have a, an impact on the election. She got really marginal. Uh, number of uh, votes. Um, so I, I, I think it is a male-dominated field. Presidential elections in Sri Lanka is a male-dominated field. Um, another interesting uh, finding, of course, uh, systematically, is is always always a two-way race. Sri Lankan elections are two-way race. Always, hundred um, percent. So, uh, 2019, I read some analysis on the presidential election of 2019. Uh, some commentators argued um, uh, um, Mahesh Senanayaka could win the election. Uh, that was the former the military man. Uh, but I was uh, 2019. I was kind of working on this, uh, still working on this project because it, pub it was published in 2022, uh, last last year, almost last year. Um, and I was thinking to myself, my data doesn't support it uh, because uh, you see, the blue line is the winning candidate, the orange line is the candidate who came second, and the the gray line is the uh, the third candidate. Absolutely nothing. The third candidate doesn't get anything in Sri Lanka. So it's always a two-way uh, race. That happened last time also. Both of my Rajapaksa and... and, and uh, so, um, uh, although uh, lots of candidates are in the elections, increasingly, um, we started with six. The last time it was like 36. Uh, absolutely no impact. Absolutely no impact. Always a two-way race. I'm, I'm eager to see 2024 election results to see whether this continues or changes. Um, 
Another interesting point about uh, Chula rightly pointed out Sri Lanka is a flawed uh, democracy. Uh, I agree. But one of the interesting uh, things about Sri Lanka is it's a high voter turnout system. People go to vote, vote to vote all the time. Uh, only exception was the 1989 or 88 election. Um, Premadasa's uh, victory. Uh, the election was uh, disrupted uh, fundamentally by the JVP's uh, second uh, insurgency. Uh, um, for, forgive me about the uh, uh, about the terms I I use when I was talking to my colleagues last time, uh, and I mentioned the term um, JVP's second in insurgency. I was like seriously criticized for. Uh, using that term to describe JVP's uh, the campaigns. Uh, but I, I think uh, I am, it's legitimate to use the, the word uh, second, second insurgency. So I don't know, we can come back to that topic uh, uh, if you want uh, during the Q&A. Uh, and the last election, we had 83% uh, voter turnout, very high. Um, um, and uh, the research found there's absolutely no systematic analysis about uh, why Sri Lankans vote in large numbers. Uh, some of the uh, investigations in South America about election manipulation point to uh, positive relations between, I mean, negative relations between uh, manipulation and voter participation. If voter participation is low, manipulation is high. But I found in Sri Lanka a positive relations. Manipulation is also high and voter participation is also high. But there's absolutely no substantial in-depth analysis about why Sri Lankans um, vote in large numbers. And I also did not go into that aspect. That was not my, my research. But my initial um, understanding from the materials I generated, uh, I argued uh, some of the factors that uh, influence high voter turnout, uh, like um, a decent, efficient election commission conducting elections. Uh, of course, there are weaknesses, but Comparatively, it is it is a yeah, pretty good uh, mechanism, and the the time it takes to vote also 20, 25 minutes if you are in a in a major center takes only twenty minutes, and people are also um, very uh, politically socialized, so they know election is happening, what issues are discussed, who is com com competing, contesting, so they know know everything. So therefore, they are eager to go and vote, and another argument I make in the book why Sri Lankans vote in large numbers is that they want their ideological champions to win the election. They want to make sure their ideological champions win the election so they are eager to go and vote. Um, so that's another argument I made. But those are like tentative um, conclusions because I did not take undertake an in-depth analysis or research about that fact. So in the future, um, political science students can do um, um, research those um, area. Um, I uh, defined uh, defined um, uh, um, polit uh, manipulation as like a strategic moves to shift the victory towards the manipulator or manipulator preferred candidate because I, as I said earlier, manipulation could be undertaken by other actors, companies, uh, NGOs, um, citizens, etc. And I also argue it's not illegal. Uh, perfectly legal means could be used to manipulate elections. I come to the, some of the examples. Uh, and also violence is not part of my definitions. Um, so, uh, after uh, undertaking an in-depth analysis of eight elections conducted so far from 1982, I came up with six significant ways 
elections are manipulated in Sri Lanka. Of course, there are other there, there could be other other elements as well, but they did not come up as like a significant aspects of election manipulation. So these are the uh, these are the six areas I identified from my uh, research. Um, so um, the first one I call um, I call constitutional uh, tinkering, um, changing the constitution. Um, in order to win elections. The best example could be um, the Third Amendment uh, introduced in 1982 by uh, So he changed the constitution to say, president can conduct uh, election anytime after four years. Uh, so one of the uh, uh, significant characteristics of uh, election manipulation is it creates an uneven feel for all the contestants. It's not even field. It's uneven field. So if the president can select the date and the election could be conducted in a time that favors the president. So that is the idea behind the third amendment that was done in 1982. So we saw uh, in Sri Lanka almost all <laughs> presidents <laughs> using that uh, constitutional provenance to uh, provision to to advance or postpone <laughs> i mean push back um, elections um, um, so I'll, I'll come to examples uh, later um, and some of the uh, people i talked to about this issue suggested uh, the 15th amendment could also be considered I mean, uh, analyzed under this uh, this uh, um, argument because uh, that was a deal between uh, some of the Muslim parties and uh, candidate Premadasa uh, to reduce the cutout point for the parliamentary elections from 12.5 to 5%. Uh, so that the small parties could send more representatives um, to parliament. Uh, so until that agreement, Ashraf was in, to a large extent, Ashraf was in um, Sirima Bandar like a camp. Then he shifted to R. Premadasa because of the agreement. Eventually, the constitution was changed hurriedly a few uh, weeks before the uh, elections to election to change the cutout point from uh, 12.5 to 5 percent. Then Asha voted, uh, supported Premadasa. Premadasa eventually won. Uh, to a certain extent, 18th Amendment could also be described. Uh, Rajapaksa uh, removed the two-term limit, changing the constitution in order to win elections. Contest, of course. Um, uh, and you know what happened. It's a very recent uh, development. So, But marginally, though. Um, the second um, um, election manipulation tactic is uh, what I call uh, field fixing. Field fixing is the powerful actor, the candidate or the party, determining the field itself. So we would they would determine who would contest and who would not contest the election so that the preferred candidate could win the election. The best example is the uh, Sinema Mandanaika civil rights uh, case uh, undertaken by uh, Jair Javardana. Uh, so he knows that if Sinema Mandanaika contested, contested the, uh, contested the uh, presidential election 1988, uh, there will be a strong competition from her. Therefore, he manipulated the process to deny her rights to contest the election for seven years. She got it back immediately after the election, I think. So that's a really uh, nice way of uh, doing it if you are the uh, manipulator. Um, and she couldn't contest because of the uh, the the, the process uh, yeah, yeah, introduced. And uh, Kope Kobe Kadua was the was the um, candidate of the SLPP, and there's absolutely no competition. So Jaja Vardhana won like 
straight away uh, impressive uh, election uh, victory uh, if i remember correctly um, and kopi gadu was not a perfect candidate to begin with uh, and i also found um, rohan vijayvira could also be discussed under this category because he was released from the prison uh, before the election and there is no evidence to suggest that there was some sort of understanding between rohan vijayvira and uh, and uh, jayarja vardhana um but jayarja vardhana could have imagined that. so he was released from the prison he started a political party and he contested the election and slpp and jbp come from the same electoral background rural single buddhist uh, type base vote base so by contesting the election he took some votes from the uh, sl slpp probably and after the election 82 election was uh, election was conduct, conducted happened in 19 82 then the party was banned after 1983 riots so he was out only for the election period so i'm what i'm saying is without rohan vijayvira no rohan vijayvira could have been influenced to you know uh, impact the presidential uh, field in in that year um, so um number 3 i call uh, time fixing um the candidate selecting the time of the election most favorable to the 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 ruling ruling party um uh, we know about that jayawardena advanced by 2 years kumar tonga advanced by 1 year rajapaksa advanced 2 years by 2 years in 2010 he also advanced election in 2015 um, so everyone use it and uh, and the other candidates are at a disadvantage because the election is scheduled to favor the ruling party so that's also election manipulation fixing the time changing shifting the election results by picking the right time for the ruling party so that's the idea behind it um another um significant way of election manipulating elections in sri lanka is vote suppression um various ways are uh, used uh, sometimes um, the um, the booths are not uh, set up in unfavorable places um, sometimes um, there were um, um, instances where people complaining that their names were missing from the election list so that they, they could not vote for example if a if a specific group is um if the ruling party party um assumes that a certain groups are going to vote against them and then you systematically remove their names from the from the list there were complaints uh, that could be investigated um, but the main example is 20 2005 ldt boycott um, suppressing the votes of a large minority group that the government knew would vote against the government um, so we still remember that um, and i found um, there are different theories about um, about why the ltt decided to boycott the election in 2005 one theory argues that the tamils were frustrated about singular leaders uh, so they did not want, did not want to participate in the election itself so frustration uh, leading to the boycott uh, the another theory lots of discussions about it there are some evidence to that argument um and i found uh, um, some wikileaks documents that also talked about the bribery 
aspect of the void chord. Uh, that theory kind of argues um, that the LTT was uh, bribed by the, the government um, in 2005 so that the Tamils did not vote that facilitated the victory because uh, the government knew the Tamils would vote against Rajapaksa. Um, another maybe marginal idea that argued um, uh, LTT wanted hardliner in the South so that it can go back to war and justify its war against uh, Sri Lanka and uh, a moderate uh, would undermine that argument. Therefore, they wanted Rajapaksa to win the election. They manipulated the election. I mean, they organized an, a boycott to determine the election. So those are the theories that uh, kind of go into why the LTT boycotted uh, the election. The fifth um, manipulation um, is uh, manipulating the uh, election process itself. And here I was like uh, very thrilled because uh, I noticed in uh, Sri Lanka and also most other places, everyone who contests the election is called a candidate, like a monolithic thing. And I found that's not true. Uh, Content, I mean, uh, candidates are different. So I, I, I devised a category of uh, election uh, candidates based on their objective. Um, and I found there are five different types of election candidates, I mean, presidential candidates in Sri Lanka. Uh, um, contenders, win, I mean, contest the election to win the election. Mostly the two major candidates are contenders um, because it's, it's always a two-way race, right? Um, I call the second category consolation seekers because they contest the election not to win the election, but also but to achieve another political objective. And the best example I have was uh, Kumar Pondampalam who contested the 19... 82 election election I, I think um, because he wanted to because at that period the the main Tamil party TULF has become a little bit softer on Elam issue and Kumar Pondamparam said he wanted to regenerate revitalize the Elam slogan so he said, I'm contesting the election to get a mandate from the Tamil people. So it, it's not about winning the election. You know, you can't win. So he was trying to achieve another political um, objective by contesting the election. And I call them consolation seekers. Then there are vote breakers. Um, vote breakers are fielded by one of the two candidates or prominent candidate in order to break the um, votes of the opponent. Um, Osia Begun Sekara was one of the examples I found uh, could be discussed under wood breaker category. And there are lots of people, um, Rana Singers, Hudson, uh, Samara Singers, all are wood breakers. Uh, so they are fielded, proxies fielded to break the votes of the opponent. There are also proxies to field, fielded to get advantage resource advantages like additional campaign time on TV, um, booth managers, etc. So they are also proxies, but, but they are not prominent enough to break votes. So they are just there to give an added advantage to the manipulator. And I also have a category, category the final category, um, all fame seekers. They are just there for publicity. They can't break votes. They don't have secondary political objective so they are there for to some some something else for example sell sell their uh, sell their super uh, wiki or whatever uh, so uh, that is the fifth category out of the fifth category uh, five categories i generated number 3 and number 4 are part of the manipulation process all the other categories are not connected to manipulation number 3 and number 4 because they are trying to change the uh, election results by intervening um, 
in the in the in the election we can come back to the actual cases um so this is that's why we have so many candidates contesting elections in sri lanka as i said this is the number of candidates in different elections we started with six it went down to three when premadasa contested srima bandara ek osia begun vardana and premadasa then it skyrocketed to 36 in the last election always going up and i i if trend continues it will reach 40 in 2022 i don't know we'll wait and wait and and, and see um then of course uh, resource manipulation is big part of uh, election inter interference in, in sri lanka um economic incentives are provided through budgets uh, in order to favor the ruling party uh, salary increases price reductions etc then uh, manipulating the um me government media i remember 20 20 2010 i was in still in sri lanka i went to the booth in the morning and uh, mahinda rajapaksa was um, uh, was doing a huge uh, pirit uh, with uh, thousands of monks surrounded by thousands of monks and you know this buddhist um, um, imagination so that's how i went to the went to the booth with that picture in my mind but i didn't vote for him uh so <laughs> um so those are the examples and using uh, vehicles so manipulating the resources giving advantage to one candidate that's the ruling party candidate or ruling party preferred candidate and all the others are at a disadvantage so that is the idea behind this category uh, so that's uh, that's my 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 research uh so chula over to you ha huh, thank you <laughs> thank you so much for that elaborate uh, discussion i think it's very good i'll allow uh, the audience to ask questions if you bring out your slides then we'll be able to see the others as well in the in the screen so the um the uh, um i uh, you can talk to me in singular i i, I understand singular that's okay perfectly. because there are lots of other people listening and it's a public video so i tend to uh, use more english because just to keep the balance uh, but uh, yes um, yes singering also we can talk the um, the uh, really but i i i can i can answer in singular uh, you don't want yeah, so is there any anybody can you can you singular okay so is there any questions just raise the hands in the meantime i'll tell a little bit of background the we i didn't know anything about this election manipulation until i learned it from two people named uh, i will say the names janaka and bernard who really did a lot of research in relation to election numbers in sri lanka and they brought up these uh, it's quite hard mathematics to understand exactly what has happened and as you said the proxy candidates or the decoy candidates is a very good manipulation system then the voter deletion as you mentioned that was a very good way of manipulating the election system then violence violence is actually targeted to stop people voting and incentives also targeted to stop particular category of people voting and boycotts as you said as well so it's a very very complex area i'm i'm not going to talk very much but i will say that if you have a student or someone who will be interested to do this research and you can publish it the other way say not sri lanka the methods of manipulating a democratic election kind of like a thesis or even a research paper that will be really useful for people to focus on say these are the areas that you need to be wary about if you want to have a proper democratic election so to do that i mean i can link you up with the other two people who's got so much knowledge about this as well but you will need someone who can do that bit of research and then publish a paper so vijay has uh, raised the hand vijay is here you're welcome vijay thank you yeah uh, uh, hello um yeah thank you uh, i have two questions uh, dr geeta um one is why you omitted uh, government or uh, rather state violence 
it may not be in a presidential election but we all know during a local uh, government election in jaffna the some of the government ministers went there they in the last minute they changed the election officers brought some election officers from kurunagala and andradapura and changed you know they did so much of manipulation on the uh, ballot boxes during that time only the jaffna library was burned so why you omitted state violence uh, whereas you indicated uh, jvp violence and uh, ltt violence my second question is can you uh, give me an example where ltt violence disrupted or manipulated the election there was ltt violence but how you relate ltt violence to a presidential election can you give me an example well i wanted to uh, those are good questions i wanted to exclude violence from manipulation i i thought they were two different categories uh, violence is absolutely illegal uh, they should be examined theoretically from a different perspective uh, manipulation is or like a little bit of like a, um, not very direct uh, indirectly making moves uh not very obvious uh, violence is uh, like very direct go and attack somebody prevent voting etc uh so they should be i mean from a practical perspective you can argue manip election could be manipulated i mean yeah that's the problem my my problem is when you use the word manipulation it is uh, a little bit uh, not very obvious you do things that kind of you know have an impact on the election outcome but violence is illegal and very direct so it would have an impact on the on the on the election but uh, but uh, um, it should be from my perspective should be discussed from a different theoretical perspective and uh, therefore i did not um, um, uh, take ltt violence as um, a manipulation I, i did not treat ltt violence as a manipulation uh, tool also jvp i think jvp i i i examine jvp contesting the election as part of having an impact but did not use um, use um, that as a form of manipulation but i was i was talking about a jvp second insurgency to indicate the um, indicate the uh, uh, percentage of votes um voter participation one year it went down due to the insurgency that was the point so as i said from the theoretical theoretical chapter itself i i established clearly violence is not my 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 part of my thinking in terms of uh, manipulation yeah vijay is that reasonable yeah anything else vijay yeah but that is also say for example i was uh, taking an example of local government elections in jaffna the state they interfered in the election that's uh, you know you it's it's a form of manipulation so why did why you yeah that's why that's that why i'm part? saying when, when, uh, yeah from a, from a theoretical perspective manipulation is not very obvious violence is very obvious and and also illegal for me at least i mean i mean we can disagree but for me it is not obvious manipulation is not very obvious and it should not be illegal for example changing the day, fixing the date to favor one candidate is not illegal uh, so that i mean i i realize i appreciate the 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 concern that's why i i established in the theoretical chapter itself saying i'm not treating violence as manipulation so it did not take but you know could be done could be done you can argue you can say okay did the government by using violence manipulate the election or did something else so that could be argued but i was obvious from the beginning this is not part of my discussion so yeah and also uh, there's a 
something uh, I'm it's missing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No. If if you yeah. have if you want no. to do yeah, an yeah. analysis, I'll I'll come to just just give me just one minute. I'll I'll add. Yeah. Um, if you want to do the uh, uh, analysis or research, you can define manipulation, including violence, and then undertake the analysis as well. You can do that, but in my case, I did not. I was not convinced, so I did okay. not. But it was just stated already. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I, I just want to indicate that you missed one part. Uh, there was a candidate called Sivaji Lingam. Mm -hmm. He was used by a political party to contest the election, to divert the votes going to a going to another party. So you never mentioned about Sivaji Lingam, whereas you mentioned about other names. Yeah, yeah there's so many one, names. Yeah, yeah. He no, no. That was the main. Maybe he's. Uh, belongs to your party or something like that, I don't know. And also, he was contesting election in Kurunagar, where Mahindra Raja Baksa was contesting. What is the point of contesting a Tamil in Kurunagar, and a Tamil from Velvet VVT from Jaffna? So he is a person who is used by so the which, Raja which, Baksa which, which election? Which election is this? In, in, he contested the president election. I I can't tell you the exact year because I was not in presidential presidential, presidential presidential elections are nationwide elections, right? Why are you talk, yeah. talking about Kurna, Kurna? No, no. I I'm you know I I'm telling the same person who who was used in the president election as well as in uh, you know uh, parliamentary election in Kurna. The same person was Sivaji Lingam was used in both elections. President election as well as in Kurnagal election. Kurnagal election was a parliamentary election. Anyway, it's okay. That's I just want to mention that. Yeah, Kurnagal. I mean, parliamentary election is not part of my my thinking, my analysis. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, but, I know. But, I know. Sivaji Lingam. Sivaji Lingam. Sivaji Lingam. Um, contested. He could be. He could be. He could be part of the manipulation that I said. There different candidates contesting for different reasons. I mean, of course, uh, Zuhaji Lingam was a candidate, uh, but didn't get too many votes. Uh, at least Kumar Pondambalam got uh, about 2% uh, something something votes altogether. Uh, so even Tamils did not vote for him. But I mean, under 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 the uh, different candidates category, he could be discussed. And of course, I didn't mention all the names. I mean, I, thousands, I mean, hundreds of candidates. Uh, from 1982 to 19, 2019, I didn't mention all the names. So, all right, I don't uh, remember I, names. I yeah, don't remember I mean, what you say, Kira, is really, really true. And and Vijay, thank you for pointing out these election violence issues. And I've been in the receiving end in year 2005, six, I think. Because they, this election violence is very targeted in certain areas. But then uh, I was working in the ICU as a medic, and then we received three patients. I shouldn't say where, very seriously injured. And then we had to treat, because the patients are patients, we treat them equally. And then we uh, resuscitated three of them. And then we found out that that there were people with guns coming into hospital to target these three. And I must, I'm very proud of my staff and everybody because the ICU staff, uh, ICU patients go by numbers rather than by names. So we will say bed six is so and so. And this staff was really good in the, they regularly changed the bed numbers of these people and they all survived and went home. And to tell you the truth, one of the one of the real culprits was, although was working in Kandy, he got very friendly with me and he admitted that he was a thug from Batiklo, mm -hmm. who was working in for the election purposes in 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 Kandy. So so you can see it's it's a very complicated subject, this violence business. But there are two people who's raised their hands and also there is something in the chat asking you a question. So if you look at it at the same time, it's good though. Uh, Nirmala next, yes, Nirmala. Yeah, that's, uh, can I can I just uh, yeah. uh, take one minute? I mean, that's that's exactly what I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to say. Violence is a complicated issue. 
if I include uh, violence into, uh, from my perspective, into the manipulation framework, the uh, the uh, the framework becomes very uh, shallow. It's not very uh, very clear. Then uh, the analysis would become a little bit of uh, uh, not focused well. Uh, that in order to define my research, in order to make it clear, I exclude it. That discussion is in the in the in the in the uh, theoretical framework discussion. Why I exclude it. Uh, but it was stated so in order to um, minimize the complications I left violence because it's a very complicated subject and it could be a different uh, framework to analyze elections how elections are undermined through violence Could another book could be written on that um, so yeah I'm, I'm sorry Go ahead. Yeah, that's okay so there's a question on for you, you on the chat as well. Yes, uh, Nirmal, yes. Um, so, uh, Doctor, first, uh, a question out of curiosity, a personal question. Uh, your name, very interesting name. Uh, are you Dr. Guy D. Fondelen or Keith Fondelen? And, and uh, tell me something about the origins of your name before I get to the <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> what I know is, what I know is, my name is Keith Abongal, and that's what I know. I don't so have any. Your, uh, your, your birth name, name is, is Keith Abongal, right? Not Guy T. Um, oh. I, I know there is some French, French um, aristocracy <laughs> <laughs> connection, connection to connection to Guy T. Abongal and Keith, Keith Abongal, but I'm not aristocrat. I'm I'm an ordinary man. Uh, no no family. Okay, thanks, thanks. That's what I was trying to clarify. I, I don't know. So now listening to you, um, there are there are certain areas of interest. One thing I noticed, one thing I want you to clarify for me is very shortly. I don't want the lecture. Uh, what is the definition of election mani manipulation that you have used? And then very briefly in point form one two three four five. What are the different types of election manipulation that you successfully identified? Yeah, that is my last uh, last uh, last um, slide. I identify six specific manipulation strategies. Changing the constitutions, fixing the time of the election, uh, fielding proxies, um, all the others uh, that I uh, listed in the slide. Six, six manipulation Do you strategies. feel that you have captured them all comprehensively or do you most of them that most, most of most of them most of them most of them and there could be minor there could be minor stuff that could have uh, left out for example when i say state media a friend asked me why did you did you not include manipulation of private media but in the research it did not come up as like a major form of manipulation could have done could have happened in here or there uh, minor inst in instances, but uh, state media constantly always bigger and very significant. So that was included. Uh, it some of the stuff, although I know in my mind happens, did not come up in the data collection. So I can I cannot manipulate the election in order to influence and have my own uh, biases in the in the in the analysis. So they were left out. When I was talk talking about um, state media, automatically private media comes into mind, but I did not have any data on it. Not very prominent at least, so. Yeah, so then, then back to your definition, how do you define election manip manipulation? Yeah, undertaking strategic moves in order okay. to shift the election results. That is the definition. Uh, shift the election results, results. or mm -hmm. the trend. Re results. That's how I define. Shift the election results. That's so that I, is I, after, I... after the trend is manifested in the form <laughs> of votes, then you are going to do something to change it, is it? Is that what you mean by manipulation? That's an interesting question. For example, um, um, the boycott. As I said, there were different theories about why the LTT boycotted. One theory says that the Rajapaksas uh, instigated that. 
if that was true, then you know the Tamils would vote against Mahindra Rajapaksa and he would lose. Therefore, in order to make sure Mahindra Rajapaksa wins, you do something about right. that, those votes. So, so you I, prevented I a trend. So you prevented a trend, right? You blocked a trend actually, very successfully. Yes. Right. So, yes, so, but... so you would, uh, because I see two things. I see one, purely strategically. Uh, I mean, one could use a, a structure, an organization, in order to actually uh, thwart or deflect a trend. Uh, you could take even the Easter bomb blast, perhaps, uh, as something like that, you know, where, where an event could have been engineered uh, to shift the trend completely. That is, that's one kind of manipulation. The other kind of manipulation would be where post election, after the votes have already been cast, something is done in the counting or in the announcement of the counted votes, which manipulates the outcome. Uh, how would, where would your definition say? Before the election. Before the election. We, we, you do something to before the election. If you if you say say for example, if you do not count votes, that's illegal stealing of the votes. Right? So the, I don't want to categorize under manipulation. Right. Because it's illegal and it's also stealing. So yes. that should be discussed under stealing. Right. So uh, what you're speaking about is legal. What you're speaking about is something quite legal, right? Mostly, mostly legal. Mostly very legal. good. So, so that, that's pretty good because then you're actually looking at the, the you're actually looking at engineering, you know, a kind of social engineering, which gets right. people to behave in a way that they normally would not have behaved. Exactly. Oh, so, uh, so you talked about uh, 2019, and if you if you treat that as part of manipulation, you have to establish 2019 was undertaken by the government, right? By somebody who wanted to change the name. Yeah, but you as I who? said, yeah, but as I said, my research is not about manipulation by others. Ah, okay. Right, that was my introduction in the presentation on also book. And I was looking at manipulation by political actors, political parties and political leaders. Uh, so that's that's why, but I discussed 2019 uh, as having, having an impact on the on the election, but not under manipulation category. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm not looking at it from the point of view of whoever it is who did the manipulation. I am more interested in the in the manipulation itself and and the methods that are, have been used. Doesn't matter who did it. That's a different story. Because these methods are interesting. They, they are sort of universal. They can be, can be used in different contexts, different countries, different times for different objectives. And that's what makes them pretty interesting and cause for concern. You've done a wonderful job. And I've learned quite a lot from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nirmalan. Uh, Shannon, Shannon, I think it's Bernard, right? Shannon? Ah, yes, sir. Sorry, yes, sir. I am calling on your reverence name. That's my granddaughter. Uh, I just, uh, I was on muted mode and just, uh, as I put it on, unmuted it, I, you heard my name and Dr. Janaka's name being mentioned. So, in fact, I think Dr. Jula has already uh, billed me to speak on this equality of vote. Now, this is the kind of manipulation that we, I think uh, this Dr. Keita is also mentioning. Manipulation through constitution. Now, in the constitution, uh, uh, section 93, if I am correct, says uh, should be by equal ballot. And at the same time, UN uh, Convention uh, also says equal suffrage must be maintained for democracy. And we are also signatory to that. So I think I have been writing about this matter since 2015, when somebody wrote to the press and said, I just can't understand the results, how these results, whether I am mad or the people who allocated the seats are mad. So then I, uh, I did some my person, I, I am a simpleton, but I did my personal uh, uh, kind of research to see what are the reasons for this. The reasons for these manipulations are, I think Dr. Chula knows because I have already made some, uh, already three presentations on these uh, uh, proposals on the system changes. Uh, under that, where I identified number one, 22 bonus seats are given summa without any uh, vote, vote support. Number two, there is a earlier 12.5 uh, 
the cutoff point was there. Now it has been reduced to 5%. Even 5% uh, is a big amount where, where valid votes are just thrown into the waste paper basket. Number three, in the determination, in the allocation of seats to the, there's a pre-allocation of seats to the districts. I think Dr. Keita will know. They, the now say Kalambu, the other 19 seats are given. Kalambu, so that is pre-allocation based on registered voters, not on valid votes. Not on valid votes. So these are the main three reasons that gave rise to these uh, manipulations on the part of politicians who tinkered the constitution in the 78 itself, though the 93 says it was valid, but elsewhere in the proportional representation system provides for these uh, uh, bonus seats, uh, percentage of cutoff point and all the, uh, other about the pre-allocation of seats. So this is a real manipulation. If you look at the, now I don't know whether I can show it to you, but uh, looking at the figures, uh, then uh, in uh, 2015, my letter appeared in the press. I said, change the basis for allocation of seats that uh, I had a center, uh, center page headlines in one newspaper. And uh, in, in 2020, <coughs> after election results, I similarly, another person has uh, written to the press and then I worked on it. And then similar results I got. Uh, how, how this have been manipulated? For example, can I, I don't know whether I have. Uh, Time to uh, five to ten minutes to explain this, Dr. Keith. Uh, the figures are. No, I have no problem. Uh, this is two, I've got two only minutes forty-five minutes more. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. So that's if right. You can and, say and, this and, is better, but I mean, if you want to. Yeah, I, 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 I won't go to figures, but I can just mention a few. Now, if you take the earlier, how this inequality of vote was so evident in 1970 and 1977 elections, you understand? Now, no doubt they are counting the ballots as one, 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 they count the ballot. But when you look at the results, there is a big discrepancy in, in, in terms of the relativity of the votes and the number of seats. For example, 70 elections, that of the SLFP, with 1.839, uh, 1,839 votes, they got 91 seats, okay? Whereas, now this is for single parliament, okay, this is a parliament election, one parliament. And UMP with one uh, one point eight nine million, that is uh, some sixty thousand or more than more than the SLFP vote. They got only seventeen seats. Then how come? Is it the equality of vote is there? Can you, Doctor Giti? I think I don't know whether you have got into this, uh, uh, gone into this uh, earlier. So this is uh, they are uh, with more votes, seventeen seats, and uh, with less votes, ninety one seats. And the same thing was repeated in 1977 with the UNP. Get it? Out of 3.1 million votes, they got 140 seats. Whereas, uh, uh, no, so yes, uh, UNP got 140 seats and SLFP with 1.8 million odd votes got only 8 seats. And TULF with 421,000 votes got 18 seats. So this, this simply shows that FPP system, when it uh, was passed the post system, was really wrong. And uh, if there are still some contenders or two uh, protagonists of the FPP system because, because they want an MP to their electorate. That can be done under the, I have a proposed, I think Dr. Chula knows, I have proposed a system where equal value of vote is ensured. This is what I think even the Aragale also wanted. This system change, yeah, these are the system changes that should have happened. Uh, and this has not happened. And if uh, if I may just uh, just give the figure about this uh, last election results, when uh, SLPP got 145 seats, claiming two third uh, two third majority, whereas if it under refined percentage arithmetic, which is already given in the election results sheet of the uh, election commissioner, he says uh, uh, percentage is official national percentage of SLP is, uh, SLPP is 59.09. Uh, which uh, which uh, gives him uh, gives them only 133 seats, whereas they got 145 seats. You see, and similarly, uh, uh, the, the, this how that the reader wrote like this about this JJB getting with 445,000 seats uh, votes countrywide, they got uh, only three seats, whereas ITAC with 320, there's a number of votes, they got 10 seats. 
So this is very clear. Even the after the uh, uh, 78 uh, uh, proportional representation, of course, that gave value to most of the votes better than the FPP system, but still with this uh, uh, with these uh, tinkerings, with these tinkerings, they uh, in the guise of maintaining a, a stable government. So how can democracy be inter, uh, manipulated to, uh, to favor a stable government? That is not so. Democracy is democracy and equal suffrage must be there. So this is not happening. And I am also built to speak on equality of vote. I think Professor Jewel has scheduled me to speak. So I, I, I don't know if you can respond to this. That is one. Then number number two, what I'm going to say is you said the women uh, youth participation also is important. That also I have given a solution where you have to adapt in selecting the now the Aragalia gave two uh, two messages you now on the stage. They said uh, go to go home. Okay, go to go home says that, that means abolish executive presidency, in other words. Number two, then they said. This is the 225. We don't want the entire 225. That is because that flawed election system that we are having for the last so many years. And we are getting this mediocre politicians into the picture. And these educated people, youth and new generation, they don't want this kind of people uh, to, uh, to uh, what do you call, uh, dictate terms to them. So they want, in, in short, I have put the phrase, we really want uh, uh, country first, not merely political professionals. We want country first political professionals to all 225 to come to so then only there will be a real system change in Sri Lanka. So this is but these are, I have so many other proposals that I have made, but I think these are the key manipulations that I have seen for, for the discovery uh, professionals to come into the picture, a real genuine uh, uh, representative democracy to come. We must have a real eligibility criteria, minimum eligibility, like in the formal sector where you have asked for applications and the eligible people are selected and they are interviewed. And by an interview system, they must prepare a merit list so that all parties are required by law to have this meritocratic system. So then they will know, people will be, will, because all the parties have to do this. It is compulsory. As a result, people don't have to vote for no preference vote is needed because already there are people clear because the parties have to prepare the preliminaries and well, they, they will have to be published in the press. Then the part, uh, people can object. object. All the objections, all the entire process is there. I don't have time to uh, tell all the details, but the entire methodologies I have prepared. Even the interview marking system also is prepared. Under that, we will have real professionals. Then only the Aragalia, uh, the system change that they could do, uh, we'll see the light of the day. Thank you. That, I don't want to take more time. Okay. These, okay. these Thanks. are things uh, like that. Thanks, Bernard. Yes. Yes. Any any comments from Kita? Any? Um, well, um, of course, uh, uh, parliamentary election is a different uh, framework uh, and. Uh, Constitutional experts uh, point out already uh, that uh, PR system was introduced in order to manipulate the election. Uh, so that is uh, well established. Uh, you gave uh, good good numbers, and there's a, uh, that's exactly why there is a um, ongoing debate about reforming the electoral uh, system. That is that is a good thing. Uh, Sri Lanka's election uh, system should, should be uh, reformed. Um, I, I, I believe. Um, I think these but, are the real oh, manipulations. Oh, these are the real manipulations. I think right. the violence and all that, those things are they come and go. Now we don't have that kind of stopping of ballot boxes. Those are at the minimum now. But here right. are the things that uh, master masterminds. Um, yeah, I think it should go, go into the category you call constitutional manipulation, mani manipulations, isn't yes, it? Yeah. Right. Um, you calculate, uh, categorize it. Yeah, let me let me uh, let me. Uh, 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 you ask that question. Uh, what are my uh, categories? And I I, I said I have the uh, slide, and I'll, I'll I'll show it to you. Um, yeah. uh, Nirmal and. Uh, um, do you do you see it no i think uh, do you, you got the wrong uh, wrong uh, thing shared i think you go down uh, now you can just about see it yeah 
Oh. Just get the slides on there. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, Nirman, I, I uh, um, as I said, it's it's only about presidential elections. I did not go into into um, parliamentary elections. Uh, that could be analyzed uh, differently. So, I came up with six categories of manipulation and uh, uh, what uh, I think Shannon. Uh, uh, about parliamentary election could come under the first category of uh, constitutional uh, changes uh, undertaken in order to change the election election outcome or yes. determine the election outcome. Yeah. Actually, I think, Doctor, what you have done is something complementary to what um, Bernard has been doing. Bernard has been approaching this from a different, uh, more mathematical oriented way uh, from the little bit that I have seen of his work. And, um, and yes, you are looking at it from a broadly conceptual kind of a way which captures the whole um, scope of the possible manipulations at a certain level. Yes, the same similar scope will be there even with the parliamentary elections. It'll be nice to see if, if Bernard and you can get together. Yeah. And, Actually, you know, fit Bernard's mathematical um, work into your conceptual framework because when you try to approach it from Bernard's perspective alone, I find people struggling because there's not enough of a conceptual framework behind it which allows them to interpret the numbers that he is very eloquently presenting. So it'd be nice if the two of you on the leads maybe right. could be together and, and right. come out with a complete presentation of this problem very carefully defined and uh, supported numerically. That would be, I think, uh, because this whole issue of uh, of the electoral process is now itself becoming an issue uh, for all the forthcoming elections. So if we have this document, uh, it could be a digital document. We need not yeah, I'm, I'm... yeah. Anyway. yeah I, 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 I agree with Nirmal and I, 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 I think um, the an analysis of parliamentary election could also uh, look very similar to what I have about presidential election, but we have to make sure by undertaking that analysis, I did not do it. Uh, and I'm also interested in uh, the other studies uh, taking taking a look because I'm I'm less of a less of a quantitative person. Uh, I I I I believe in qualitative analysis because uh, my my experience one I'm, I'm not a very mathematical type person uh, two uh, i see when i see uh, quantity only quantitative analysis i see people cooking up numbers uh, uh, so uh, i have uh, an experience i mean just uh, just uh, in a light um, uh, comment i'm, I'm so I was asked to look at some data sometime back when I was in Sri Lanka, and there is a specific uh, specific um, social group that had a specific opinion about something that that didn't that didn't make sense to me. So I went to the uh, the person who did the surveys and asked more questions about the survey, and I found out they had only six people surveyed to come out with an opinion about. The entire social group. So, yeah, I say, you know, if you don't say that, it completely, uh, completely uh, misleads. So, I, I always try to be a little bit careful with numbers, uh, but I find uh, convenient undertaking um, 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 qualitative analysis. But uh, we need to combine, as as Nirmal say. We need to combine, and I'm interested in yeah. taking a look at the other studies. Yeah. And I have not done any any serious analysis of parliamentary elections because, to, I mean, for this book, the subject matter is manageable, right? Because you have only eight elections, and I was able to look at all eight elections rather than excluding anything, all eight elections to come up with some categories, right? But the parliamentary elections uh, could be uh, a little bit uh, cumbersome. Because we have a long history of parliamentary election undertaken under different different um, 
systems, the different rulers. Uh, so that will take a lot of time to come up with a comprehensive analysis. Uh, but that could be a worth, uh, could be a worthy project. Uh, it's I would also uh, it's important sorry. because it would lay the foundation for any possible, uh, you know, predictive or projective work that can be doing using data and uh, data analysis, uh, machine learning, etc. Et okay, um, yeah. Leonard, you have raised your hand as well, Leonard. Yes, Leonard. Uh, just a small question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, now, do the voters in Sri Lanka are aware of this uh, manipulation? That's the first one. Uh, the second one is, even if they are aware, will they take it seriously or they would say, yes, let's go the same way that we have been doing? So that's the second question. Yes. Um, I, 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 I think Sri Lankan voters are um, well informed. Uh, in one of the slides, I said why the participation is so high because the Sri Lankan voter is well uh, socialized. Uh, political socialization is high. Therefore, I, I, I believe. I don't know, but I believe. They know some of the uh, some of the manipulation strategies undertaken by different uh, governments. For example, fixing time fixing. They know why the election was fixed, advanced by two years uh, by the government, but still they don't think too much about it. And I do not believe that the Sri Lankan people are very concerned about democracy i i do not believe that's that's my 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 understanding i may be wrong uh, um, that's why i i keep saying and, and writing that the aragalaya was more about economy than politics it's not in my view it's not a democracy movement uh, i believe if mahinda rajapaksa i mean gotabaya rajapaksa was doing well economically the people would have tolerated authoritarian trends. That's kind of my understanding. Uh, so I think I answered both questions. One, I, I think they understand. They Two, I don't think they mind. Uh, as long as the manipulator is their preferred candidate. <laughs> you, 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 you are right in there, Akita. Uh, because I was uh, contacted by a very strong uh, NPP lady this morning. Same story. Is the candidate is not democracy. So yeah. uh, that's where it is. iPad has put some. Uh, I, I I have one comment. Comment. I mean, it's a it's like a joke. Uh, uh, to Vijay. Uh, Mr. Vijay Kula thing. I am not a member of any political party. I'm actually thinking about joining a party in Sri Lanka. Uh, so if you have any, any suggestions, <laughs> just pass, pass it on. So am I, I'm not a member. I stay that way. Uh, Nirmal, and you raise your hand again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to um, just say something to you know, um, Leonard. Uh, basically, this um, that's what I was also interested in, in what Dr. Um, uh, Von Gillen was saying, like uh, this uh, election manipulation, if it is done from a social engineering point of view, in order to influence the behavior of the voters, then that I think is something that we may have to be looking at very seriously, because that is also in a certain sense what political parties do. So if we want to change, then we should become experts in that matter. And we should actually do it much more successfully than the people who are doing it for ends that we do not approve. So that's what I was getting from Dr. Von Gillen's presentation, that, that this is not necessarily a negative thing or an illegal thing. It may be just the thing that we need to be using ourselves. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Can, well said. Yeah. Can, can I? Bernard, yes. yes. With that, can I yes. respond for yeah. a bit? Yeah, just I think, uh, look, I am rather confused to see that why people call this, uh, this, uh, this uh, quantitative analysis, it, it, it is not the rocket science. It's not rocket science, it is just simple, even a five, uh, fifth grader can look at it. Even the NEC gives the percentage of votes done, uh, taken by uh, parties, and it's a case of giving the 100% uh, proportional representation according to the percentage of votes that you have obtained. Simple as that. I just can't understand because some people get scared by, by, the, by the numbers that are there. It's the number of uh, numbers in a table. But it, it is a very simple thing. It is quantification and, and it shows the, the big the disparity. Uh, it's shown 145 versus 133, and uh, people who should get uh, uh, more than three, three are getting uh, 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 less than three are getting ten. Like that. Uh, so this is nothing confused. There's nothing complicated thing here. This is simple arithmetic. The only thing is our voter literacy is so low. Nobody is bothered about uh, uh, who has. They only are, are bothered about who has won, who, who has won the uh, party, which party has won the. Uh, government and who are the people who are elected? That's all. They they are not the least bothered about how this calculation was done. But cunningly, the manipulators have included all kinds of uh, formulas uh, like uh, constructive uh, amount, regular, regular, regular regulated number the calculation. There's a there are several uh, uh, what you call steps in the calculation. That is discouraging any simple voter to go, go and uh, work out the methodology of allocating seats. So this is a very simple way. Even a small child can see how the results are correct or not. And that is transparency. Simplicity, transparency by simplicity. But here they are blocking transparency by complexities into the system. So this we must understand. This is not, this is not rocket science. This is simple, very simple things. I do consider this as rocket science. Now, for example, uh, uh, Dr. Sita mentioned about you, uh, you were talking more about the presidential election. Now, Sri Lanka is correct in regard to presidency election. Whoever who gets 50 plus one is the winner. Whereas in America, what happened? Uh, Hillary Clinton with more, more, more votes, she, she didn't get in a presidential election. That is also one person. Uh, tell me, tell Bernard, me. Can, I, can I interfere, Bernard, there? No, that is uh, a very, very, a very, very big state. So I don't want to compare even with America, but I just stated as a matter of fact. Uh, right. no, no, uh, uh, they are in, state, in research, state, uh, in research, uh, Bernard, you use both quantitative and qualitative methods based on what kind of data you have. Sometimes you don't have the measurements like one, two, three, four. It's a little bit gray. Then Everything sometimes is, uh, it's difficult to achieve the numbers. Goes. Sometimes hmm. the question is so rare that you have to yeah. do a qualitative research to get an opinion or view rather than by statistical analysis. You see what I mean? So so often it's sometimes better to combine both qualitative and quantitative as suggested by, yeah. by most of the speakers here. Yeah. So, so that, is the, yeah. that is the reason. But I have a question before. I think iPad has got put a question on the text if we can... He or she can present it better. The um, the Cambridge Analytica, for example, in 2015, made a major social platform impact because they were bored to do it. It is happening now as well. I can see it. Uh, what do you think about the you know social media platforms effect in the manipulation now? That is what is happening. <clears throat> Is it to me? Yes, that's what I thought. You know, the impact of social media, it's worked. Uh, it has interfered in presidential election in the US as well. So you, you'll be very aware of it, how it is happening. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I think it is It is serious. Um, legal and illegal <laughs> actors are using it. Uh, we saw the... Um, 2016 election in the U.S. Uh, manipulated by uh, hostile states and also um, non-state actors uh, using social media. Very serious in the U.S. Um, because of the availability of uh, social media tools, right? 
and I would be a little bit more hesitant to come to the same conclusion about Sri Lanka, because in Sri Lanka, you have these tools in uh, urban, mostly urban areas, because rural voters are not under the influence of social media extremely. They may come across, but not uh, impacted by uh, the social media to a large extent. Uh, but in the US, it's it's everywhere. It's always 24-hour news channels. Um, and what is legitimate and what is not legitimate is like blurred, any, not clear anymore. It's blurred. Uh, you always have to do the extra research in order to understand the truth that can't be done by all the people. So I think the, the impact on the Western societies are a little more serious than, say, for example, Sri Lanka. But Sri Lanka urban areas, I think it's, it's very serious. And I also believe the Sri Lankan political actors have not learned the art of manipulating elections through social media a lot. They are beginning, they are beginning. In the future, we might see serious manipulation through social media. Right now, we are in the um, early stages of using social media for election manipulation. So if, you are, if we are concerned practically from a democracy perspective, we have to start thinking about it from now, uh, now on, rather than waiting for Okay. the issue to become more more, more serious uh, so but in the u.s and places like i think west it's already too bad it's already too bad in the u.s yeah we got about 20 minutes ipad had some questions but <clears throat> i don't know whether he or she wants to put it forward uh nirmalan has raised hand again and then we can conclude yeah i just want to point out uh, that these um, strategies which are used on social media these are sort of multifaceted strategies. They can actually get into your mind and twist your thinking momentarily, even if you are on guard. And if you are not, you, you could end up going down the road you never intended going down. Now, these same strategies, they are important because these same strategies, which become so easy to play out on uh, on uh, social media and, and in the digital world, because it's so cheap, they can also be played out in the real world, in the material world, of course, at a greater cost. But then if the stakes are worthwhile, that is exactly what you are going to see happening. And we are seeing that happening now in Sri Lanka. You see this strategy of breaking the polity into small groups around various irrelevant issues, and then pitting them against each other, using one to block the moves of somebody else. Now, this comes from that digital thinking. That's where it comes from. It is being adapted to the real world. So therefore, if we are going to have a serious impact on whatever the outcome of the political processes are going to be, we have to have a group of people who masters all those things and learns how we use them or at least advise the people who need to know about it, how to use them. That's what I wanted to bring to the table now. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's very good discussion today. Thank you, Keith, uh, for highlighting all these issues. We learned quite a lot, and it's a good exchange as well. There may be opportunity to collaborate and take it forward if you want to do, if you've got the capacity and people to support, I know these are big projects, but you know you need quite a lot of planning and and putting it into your time scales and everything else. So thank you for all your contributions here. Well done. This will be a public video, so you can share it with anybody. I'll send you the link shortly. And well done. And thanks for all the all the support and and all the contributions came from the participants. I'll stop thank there. Then, yeah? It's a good morning for you, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, ten o'clock uh, in the morning. All right, great. Okay, okay. Have a good day. Thank you very much. All right, all right, all right. All right. Bye, bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.